Hi everyone, and thanks for watching. In this episode, which I call Bits and Pieces, I'd like to go through some of the little odds and ends or questions that I get on a regular basis from some people. They're small little items that I thought I would group together in one video. I may do this on a regular basis just to sort of clean up the leftover questions that I have sitting in my inbox. If you have any topics that you'd like me to do a video on, send me an email, mm at mazalik.com. So let's get started. The first one is how to deal with the rope border. I like to have a rope border around an oval. I know there's rope borders within the software, so I thought let's just take and try if we can manipulate it. I bring in the circular rope border and I stretch it out, both horizontally and I scrunch it together vertically. That didn't work well enough, simply because the rope twists are wider on the left and right and thinner at the top and the bottom. So that doesn't look right. I'd like the rope twists to be even. I then remembered there's an oval rope twist border within the software. So I bring that in and I thought, well, maybe I can manipulate that one since it's already an oval. I just need to adjust it a little bit. I click the zero key to rotate it. And again, I adjust it, bringing it in to match my vector of the oval that I want. Now it's better than the previous one, but still the twists on the left and the right are thicker than the twists on the top and the bottom. So that won't work. Let's try this again. I know there's a single rope twist within the clip art file. So I bring that one in and I adjust the size because I want the twist to be a quarter of an inch. I'm going to make a duplicate of it just so that I can see what it's going to look like if this is going to work. I'm going to nestle it right next to it and I'm going to take a few measurements. The distance from the left hand side of the left twist to the left hand side of the right twist is 0 0.1221. So now if I choose my vector of the oval and then my rope twist, and I use the copy along vector option. I can then choose the distance between each of those copies, and that was the number that we saw before, the 0 0.1221, and I hit apply. So hopefully this will work because they certainly do look like they're the same size. They're not deformed in any way, but there is a problem. If we zoom in on the left hand side, you can see there's a space between each of the twists. So that's not going to work. Let's give it one more try. I'm going to do a little bit more measuring this time. I'm going to use the extrude and the weave. So I choose my vector and I'm going to choose my component of the twist but I need to set the overlap. Well, how much is the overlap? How would you figure that out? Let's take a closer look. The size of the twist is 0 0.3075. The size of the overlap from the first to the second is 0 0.186. That's the overlap. Now that we know that number, we're gonna do a little bit of mathematics. 0 0.186 divided by 0 0.3075 equals 0 0.604. You multiply that by 100, and that's 60.4%. Back to our extrude and weave. We choose our vector, and we choose our component, and the overlap is going to be that 60.4%, or 60%, and we hit apply. There's our components. And let's take a look at that left-hand side. We had a problem there before, and now if we zoom in, we can see it's pretty even. Far more acceptable than the previous versions. But we use the extrude and weave, 
with that magical offset number. So that's how you would correct the rope problem. Let's take a look at something else. Sculpting, for example. There are times when you have multiple components and you come up a little short. For example, this leaf on the branch didn't quite reach the branch. Well, I could make a new one. That's one way of doing it. Or I can simply select the component and move it over so it does overlap the branch. But sometimes there are reasons why you can't. And I need to fill in that area between the leaf and the branch with some more material. Here's a process that I use. I first will click on the component and create a boundary vector around it. I could then zoom into that area, enter the node editing mode by hitting the end key on my keyboard and drag those end nodes to overlap the branch to, and move them in as far as you think you may need to. Once you have your nodes and vector set where you want it, click on the component and go into the sculpting tool. Now, here's something that people forget about. You can click on the option to view the background as a grayscale. That helps you see exactly where the things are placed. And if I try to do some sculpting, nothing happens. It could get frustrating at times because I really want to just push that stem towards the branch but I need to uncheck the Preserve Transparency. And then you're able to create and extend your component further out. I'm just using the smudge tool. Just like with my thumb on a piece of clay, I'm pushing it out closer to the branch. I can view it and go back in and do a little bit more sculpting if I need to. And you continue this until you're happy with the end result. As you can see, it's created extra component. There's a flat spot that's been added. How do we get delete that? Here's the quick way. Remember the boundary vector that I created. I click on that, I select the component, and I'm going to keep everything within the closed vector, which means that excess material will be deleted away. So that's a fast way of being able to make corrections to your components. Now it looks appropriate. A little trick for you. Here's a tool within the Aspire software that's very rarely talked about. It's called the Offset Visible Model. It comes in quite handy. The examples I'm going to use are the popular Celtic Weave. And there is the gadget to be able to create that. So, we click on the gadget. And the Celtic Weave Creator opens up. We set our size. One of the items that I've always wondered about is when it asks for the ve vector grid size, I didn't know what that meant. Well, it's the size between the left and the right. That's the size that you would input. It's going to create the vectors. It's also going to create the shape that we want to use. So it's basically an extrude and weave. We hit apply. We know the end result. But here's where this little extra tool comes in. Anything that's within the 3D view will be adjusted. I click on the offset model, input a number, and it'll take that component and expand it out, blow it up a little bit. 
We can change the size we want. And you can see we're getting some interesting results. Slightly different from the original. Let's try it one more time. We're going to delete our original component. You know you can create your own shapes to run along the extrude and weave. So this is sort of just a domed shape. I select the vectors, click on the extrude and weave icon, choose my shape, hit apply, and this is the results. So let's try this offset model again. 0 0.1, a little fatter, could be an interesting texture. Let's try it again. This offset model option can be used with any 3D component that you have. I'm just using the Celtic Weave Creator because it seems to be a popular topic. I used a different profile shape, so I click on the vectors, create the component. This time I'm going to do the over and under, the weaving effect. Again, it's a nice design. Well, what happens if we just blow it up a little bit? We offset the 3D model. How does it affect the over and under? There's the end result. A little stronger looking. You may like it. It may be appropriate for you or not. That's okay. Let's try it one more time. The vectors for the extrude and weave and the profile. This is a flat shaped weave. It's pretty stout already. Let's see what happens when we add a little bit more to it. A real tight weave. We don't have to change anything within our vectors. The model just gets exploded a little bit. Let's try one last thing. How about a negative number? We've always used positives. But how about a negative number? What would the end result be there? Certainly a unique design. Could be an interesting effect for somebody. Let's try this with some real components. Here's a fist that I found on the SketchUp warehouse from the internet. I created it with an offset and then another offset. And you can see it gets fatter and fatter and bigger and bigger. How about a fish? If you're going to do fish, multiples of them, change them slightly, explode them, or use a negative number so they're a little scrawny looking. Of course, you can export them. And if you re-import them, use the perspective and it'll change just the shape of the fish. Here's a short issue that I find quite often when people use text on a curve. An email came across my desk the other day and the person was absolutely sure there was a bug in the software. So let me show you what happened. I draw an arc. I go from left to right for the first arc and I draw a second arc going from right to left. I'm going to create some text.
change the size so it fits on the arc. I'm going to duplicate the name so I have one for the upper arc and one for the lower arc. I click on the text on a curve, select the name, and then select the arc. And as you can see by the settings, the wording, the text, is above the curve and it's in the middle. Looks appropriate. This is where the problem came in. The person selected the name, and then the arc, and it was upside down. And they were sure it was a bug in the software. But just remember, when you draw nodes, the first node is going to be the starting node. So in this case, the right hand side is where this name would have started. All you need to do is click on the text on other side option and it will invert it to be correct. So there's really not a bug in the system. It's the direction of the vector that caused the issue. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned a little bit through these bits and pieces. I may do this again in the future if I have some extra little details that need to be explored. Again, if you have some ideas and some topics, send me an email. If you got a question, I'll be glad to help. See you next time.